So around a year back, I was talking with one of my mentors from the R42 Institute, and we had this idea. You know, what if I could be sitting at a table and talking to a live 3D holographic projection of another person? You know, without the need to look into a screen of any sort or have a headset on or anything like that, right? True interaction with a 3D holographic projection. You know, none of the technologies out on the market uh, had an end-to-end -end solution that could, uh, you know, allow for this. You had 2D conferencing, you had your virtual reality and augmented reality solutions out there, but, you know, you're looking at avatars, right? We wanted real interactions. Um, so we knew, a uh, you know, we knew VividQ, who had been developing state-of-the-art uh, digital holography technology, and so we decided to put together a team and uh, see if we could make this a reality. Now, just to paint a picture for you guys. So the vision we had in mind, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the movie series Kingsman, but this is, you know, with Hollywood CGI and everything, but it, this is, you know, this is science fiction at its finest. This is a holographic video call from the movie. You, have, you see a board table and you see, you know, a person on the side talking to a bunch of holographic projections. This is what we had in mind. Now, a year from then, I'm proud to tell you that we were able to make this a reality. Um, we succeeded in implementing the world's first live 3D holographic video stream. And we did this last August. We demonstrated this for the first time of 2021. Now, obviously this being a holographic video stream, we worked with VividQ to put together the optical hardware for the holographic projectors. You had that on the board table. But, you know, one point of, you know, from the get-go, one of the things that we wanted to emphasize was in the VR and AR space today, to get this technology into the hands of people, you, you need a $300, $400 headset, right? And as long as that's a constraint to get this to each and every one of you, Right, scalability is gonna be an issue. We wanted this to be something that we can make available to each and every one of you. And that's why what we did was make this possible using a device that's in each and every one of your pockets. That's right, we did it using an iPhone. This has never been done before and you know, we're really proud of the fact that just a smartphone you know, that, that you can buy off the shelf, uh, we were able to facilitate this. Now, before I get into more details about how we made this a reality, I wanted to cover a little bit of the background. Now, what exactly is a 3D hologram? Hologram is Greek for a complete recording. And what, when I say that, what I mean is when you look at a 3D object, essentially what you're getting is light bouncing off of that object and you know, uh, uh, reflect, uh, getting back into your eye. And so we, in, in, in essence, we want to capture that and we do that using 3D depth data. Now, I'll tell you how we do that in a bit, but one really important thing to uh, differentiate here is that the hologram isn't actually the image that you see. That would be the 3D reconstruction. The hologram is a set of instructions that inform the behavior of that light uh, that you know, can make white noise appear like a 3D reconstruction of a real 3D object. Now, why holoconferencing, right? So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the fatigue associated with staring hours and hours into a 2D screen using Zoom and the likes. Or even with a VR headset, there's a certain degree of fatigue associated with using them. And there's a science behind this and it really boils down to four visual depth cues uh, that allow for a truly comfortable and immersive viewing experience for something that is inherently 3D. And so what you'll have is a commendation where your eye changes its length to adjust for different uh, varying degrees of depth. Then you have convergence where, you know, if I have an object, right, and I bring it closer to me, your eyes will sort of converge um, to adjust for that. And then you have a binocular and monocular parallax. Uh, you know, you, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this, but, you know, if you have a 3D scene and you look at it from two different points of view, the scene's gonna look slightly different. And the only way that you can achieve and you know, get all four of these visual depth cues working is if you have something that is truly 3D and not just a 2D image. And the reason why is if you look at the bottom right, at, at this, uh, 
image over here, what you'll see is the difference between a 2D screen and a 3D holographic projection. In a 2D screen, you have a single plane of depth. And so what that means is when I'm looking, at, when I'm focusing at a particular point, both your eyes are converging on one point. Now, in a 3D screen, what you're gonna have is the, holo the holographic projection is gonna appear to be behind the screen. And so your eyes are not gonna be meeting at the same point on the screen, but rather on, the, like, on something that is mimicking real life, really. And on the left of this slide over here, what you'll see is probably one of my favorite uh, examples that I use when I explain to someone, you know, what is a 3D hologram like? If you have two 3D objects at different depth point, at, at varying levels of depth, if I hold a camera lens and focus on one, the other one's gonna get out of focus because you know, they're not in the same plane of depth. And so that's what you're seeing over here. So now a little overview of the areas we see it. Uh, on the left side, on, on one side what you'll have is you'll have a lot of companies that are developing these image capture apps that can take real 3D, uh, uh, real life objects and generate 3D point clouds from them. And on the other side, you've got companies like VividQ that can take these computer, uh, computer models and do computer generated holography and generate 3D reconstructions of those uh, around you. And what we've managed to do is essentially bridge the gap in a live manner. So what we've, so we can capture that data live, stream it to anywhere in the world, and generate holographic projections. Now, our bread and butter is essentially the three CPC pipeline. And what that is, is it's covering the image capture, which is a modular imaging setup. I'll explain in just a bit what exactly that means. And then you have your processing, where we are essentially formatting, encoding, and compressing that data. Again, this is 3D data we're talking about. Uh, and then we're transmitting it to anywhere in the world. We'll start off with data sourcing. Now, what's really unique about what we've done is you're no longer confined to these expensive 3D uh, imaging rigs, right? We can source data from any number of uh, you know, sources that, that are depth capable. And now smartphones are capable of that. Almost all smartphones that ship today are, uh, are, have, have a depth camera uh, in them. You can also even use a swarm of drones with equipped sensors or even microscopes. And so the point is, you know, there's, there's a wide range of applications that we can use this for. Now, for our application in particular, where we're doing holoconferencing and we're trying to make that happen using a smartphone, really what we're doing is we're tapping into the live depth feed of, for in, on the iPhone it's specifically the true depth camera, but we're tapping into that. And so we're extracting the depth data from there and obviously we're getting the RGB data. And what we do is we generate something called a stacked frame. Now, what this is, is most uh, video processing codecs only support 2D out there. And we need 3D data. And so what we do is we calculate a depth diopter uh, from that depth map. And on the right side for each pixel, you've got your RGB values. And on the left side, you're gonna have that depth diopter. So what it really is, is RGBZ, where the Z is your depth diopter. And so then you have this, now that you're basically storing that 3D data in a 2D frame, which we can then use existing codecs uh, to process. And you know, we compress this and uh, onto the networking side, we use we're able to use standard H.264 video encoding because of the way we format this thing. And we first start off by transmitting it over a local connection, and we receive it, decompress it, process it. We use, again, existing uh, out-of-the-box technology such as FFmpeg, NGROC, TCP ports, and the likes. Uh, and then after that, you know, we're able to send it to anywhere, at which point we have this depth map that we can then convert to that optical wavefront. Now, before I tell you how we do that, a little bit about VividQ. So VividQ's SDK, what it really does is it can take this 3D depth map and calculate the phase pattern, which can then be used to generate a high quality holographic projection uh, using the Revival compute platforms. And they've been able to do this in a computationally efficient manner. And they also work uh, on 3D hologram display hardware. Um, and so over there, what you'll see is one of their demo materials of showing that uh, depth. You see a dinosaur in the back, and there we go, jumps off the table. <laughs> okay, now for the actual hologram generation. So remember earlier when I told you that what we're trying to do is 
in, in a sense, mimic the way that light interacts with an object. And so we use the depth map to preserve this information. Now we have that. So the way we generate that holographic projection is using a device called a spatial light modulator. And a lot of the other presentations uh, covered this, but I think the easiest way in my mind to visualize this is imagine an array of apertures. Each aperture is gonna be emitting some light waves. Okay, and these are all gonna, and you know, if you have a bunch of uh, light wave sources, they're gonna interfere with each other, but we want that. And the reason is we can manipulate the amplitude, phase, and polarization of those light waves to the point where eventually they diffract, and instead of seeing white noise, what you see is a 3D reconstruction that appears to be uh, as if it was the source image. So in terms of actually displaying that holographic projection, you have your display hardware. Now, when we set, uh, set about this, we wanted to provide two different points of view, okay? One would be the standard projector point of view on the right side, which is gonna be, you can look into the, the ND filter that is at the end of a holographic projector that we set up, and you would see the floating holographic projection. It's sort of as if you're looking in the window of a 3D scene. Now, again, we wanted, what we wanted to do was show how these holographic projections can be incorporated in our day-to-day -day lives. And so for that, probably the most market-ready way to do that is using a holographic headset. But you know, with the equipment that we had, in order to simulate that point of view, we set up the camera in such a way that the projection would appear to be superimposed on your environment. And so that's gonna be the left side. So now, you know, I've talked a little bit about how you know, some of the under the hood specifications as to how we did this. And now I'll show you what we actually did. So you remember the original source image from Kingsman that I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. This is what we managed to do. So what you'll see here is Andre, who's the head of research at Vivid Q on the right side, is actually sitting in the audience. Um, and on the left, you're gonna see Ron John, who is the founder of the R42 Institute. In the middle, you'll see me. On the top, I'm waving at you guys. And on the bottom, we are, it's like, a cheers. So yeah, this is, this is our, no CGI, this is actually what we had. And uh, that's what we did. Now, for you know, a couple of different uh, images. So on the top left, what you'll see is different poses. As you can see, we can support near full body, uh, and as well as just the headshot. On the bottom right, you'll see we can support multiple subjects in the stream. And again, this is all a live stream. Uh, and again, you'll see the depth demonstration where if you focus on my hand, my face goes out of focus and vice versa. And the top right, I'll actually get back to this image in a couple of slides. This is probably one of my favorite images. And that's of a holographic projection of myself giving a fist bump to Ranjan. Now, I'll show you some actual demonstrations from one of our live streams in the projector point of view. So this is gonna be as if I'm greeting you. So as you can see, I'm focused on my fist bump and then I reach out for a handshake and then you focus on my face. And so this is an actual 3D projection and this is live. As you can see, it's low latency uh, and, and that's really me. Uh, and you know, if you venture into mixed reality, you, you could potentially make this so that as you reach in for a handshake, it gives you some sort of haptic feedback and you know, re you're really getting a true experience versus just 2D visual interaction. So that's our greeting demo. Now, early, early on, I, I told you about the different uh, depth cues. Parallax was a big one of them. And so what that means is if I change the point of view, like in this case, taking the camera and shifting it around a bit, the position of the two objects in the scene should change relative to each other. And so that's what you'll see over here. So you can see, so that's an orchid in the top left and that's myself in like a punching position. And you'll see that they slightly change their relative position. And then now in terms of demonstrating the synchrony of our live pipeline. So basically what we did was we had our, our pipeline running, our, our, our holographic live stream. And then we also had a Zoom call running on the side where you'd get the audio in a separate stream so we could show you that it, it is really nearly in sync. Is the audio working? Or... Yeah, there you go.
So what you'll see here is there's like a half second-ish delay, uh, which you know we're working on uh, getting it to near perfect synchrony, but this is really close. And yeah, so that, that's our synchronous demonstration. Now that I've shown you uh, bits and pieces of what we've done and what we had in mind, you know, looking to the future, our big bet is that the underlying technology here is going to be ubiquitous five to 10 years down the line. You know, and any 3D data handling technology is going to be using this. You know, whether that's eventually when hall conferencing makes it out on the, onto the market, or even things like hologram-aided design, where you're shifting away from just looking at a 2D representation of computer-aided design, and you can do that using actual holograms. Right, or even you know, in construction modeling or surgical imaging, where you could potentially recreate surgical setups using a hol using holographic projections. Right, possibilities are endless, and this is the core technology that's going to lead us there. And uh, on a final note, you know, again, I, I come back to this image of the fist bump. We talked a lot about mixed reality and how we want a truly immersive experience. And I think the bottom line for us is really being able to facilitate human and holographic projection interaction, right? Where you're bringing in all these technologies that have been developed over the last 10 to 20 years, you know, object tracking, haptic technology feedback, and again, uh, hologram generation, right? And putting it all together in an end-to-end -end solution that can facilitate that interaction. So that's where we see ourselves going, and this is what we see as the future of mixed reality. Thank you.